Welcome to Talk Heathen. So no one here at this show is convinced that there are any gods at all, but we are holding out some hope that maybe someone, maybe you, will call in and convince us and show us that your god is real. And we would love that. So maybe you should give it a go. So today's Sunday and uh, here's the show. Yay, welcome to Talk Even, as I just said. Today is Sunday, May the 14th, 2023, and I am Katie Montgomery, your host. And this week, I am joined by the amazing Sin Sage. Uh, Sin, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing wonderful. Up, Great. Uh, well, up well, early well, for church. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is, this is the new church. So, um, yeah, welcome to Talk Heathen. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know, Talk Heathen is a product of the Atheist Community of Austin, and it is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And we are dedicated to the promotion of atheism, critical thinking, secular humanism, and the separation of religion and government, which are all really super important things. And that is why we are spending our amazing church time here with you right now, and why you're here to watch and join in, hopefully. Um, but the best way you can join in obviously you could be in the live chat below but even better still is you could call in this is a live call-in show you can come in and you can humiliate two hosts live on air and show us that we're going to hell or you know that your god's real and he's laughing at us or whatever you can call in on 512-991-9242 or you can do it from your computer for free uh anywhere in the world on tiny.cc forward slash call th um yeah and we'd love to have you we do have some space in the lines so uh so get calling now's your chance if you've always thought maybe i'll call in one day and in one day i don't know today this is the day best two possible hosts you could talk to so i think it will be great but to get everyone going we've got this thing that we started doing fairly recently uh, i'm sure that the regular viewers will, will be well aware of it now we have a question of the week and this section is called talk heathen to me or to, to us i guess but yeah talk heathen mm -hmm. to me sounds better so last <laughs> week we asked um name an unconventional way to test god and we uh got some amazing responses and we're going to read out some of the best responses uh, in a second so if we're going to ask another question and if you want to have your answer read out next week then you've just got to write probably a funny answer you know but but so anyway so we asked <laughs> name an unconventional way to test god and we thought the third best uh comment was from brin star media who said unconventional test for god pray for a second flood and ken ham's ark floats with him to fire island <laughs> um, yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> um, the second best one we thought was from Joey Maxi. Way to test God. He can play a complete game of Monopoly to completion without a fight. <laughs> yeah, that that's just like logically impossible. That's a logical fallacy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not even like a physical test. It's just impossible. Yeah. But our number one comment of the week was from Nick Knows Nothing, uh, apart from the best way to write a comment to answer this. And that is unconventional way to test God. A blood test, but graded on a curve. Okay, hmm. not quite sure what that means, but um, <laughs> um, but I was thinking a, a good way to test God maybe would be to challenge him to destroy himself, because obviously the only thing mm. ever that could destroy a God is God. So that means that we can safely say that God, God, you know, he'd obviously step up to my challenge because you know who who wouldn't want to so uh that means that god currently can't exist because he literally just destroyed himself to prove to me that he's strong enough like one second ago so but anyway um, <laughs> so the question <laughs> you know god was around until like yeah just four now. minutes past 7 p.m March, uh, 2023 um yeah so this week we would like to know if you had your own circle of hell what would the punishment be so sin if you had your own circle of hell what what would go on there would it would it be fun <laughs> uh, that's what I was, kind there, of, I, I was thinking about this question and i was like okay do they mean for you know do you mean for it to be like something that's actually like awful and torturous or like what i if i was the designer what i would yeah. do because um, i think my circle of hell would basically be like just um 
the biggest queer orgy ever, like of all. <laughs> so all of us, uh, you know, queer souls that got sent to hell, we would just be, you know, fucking all the whole, all ever, every single one of us. But the thing, what makes it hell for the evangelicals who are definitely getting sent there um, is that they have to watch and participate in, <laughs> <laughs> in the queer orgy. So, you know, uh, those unnameable male politicians who are very, <laughs> very homophobic and transphobic. Um, sorry, when you come down to my circle of hell, when Jesus uh, sets you on fire and sends you down to my circle of hell, uh, <laughs> you know, you're going to be participating the, in the queer or she. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're also, if you're the creator and you're like creating hell and heaven, because whatever, <laughs> the, the, the hell would obviously have the queer orgy, but probably heaven would too. So basically you're fucked guys. Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's, there's a queer orgy. <laughs> yes. I like that. <laughs> so maybe, maybe the real hell is where we are right now. And just when we die, we get to go to the, the queer orgy where uh, politicians have are forced to just watch. I don't know. That sounds kind of no. They have know. to participate. <laughs> They're part of it. They there's no escaping whether either direction you end up in. It's gonna be that way. <laughs> well, sounds good. I, I so hope... we would <laughs> we would love to hear your uh, your suggestions. And can you think of a better circle of hell punishment than? mandatory queer orgy <laughs> or <laughs> or maybe as uh obviously as within the terms of youtube um you could uh describe <laughs> what you think about this amazing suggestion from sin um i mean maybe you could even call in about it if you like we we still do have space in the lines you can call in and the number is just below as you can also call in by clicking on the link in the description um, we'd love to hear from you, even if we all we end up doing is talking about queer or hell orgy. I, I <laughs> well, but that's yeah. the thing is, you know, like hell, it's something that's that they designed. And if I get to design it, it's like, you know, for me, I've never really seen hell as like the torture plays. I've seen it as kind of like, well, uh, all the coolest people are clearly going there. So it sounds like it'd be more fun than the <laughs> than the other place <laughs> but i think it's just that like um it was all very confusing isn't it it's almost like the world does isn't does it work as black and white good and evil <laughs> it's like, almost it's almost <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah I, I feel like a, a general rule for life uh, outside of maths of course but in every in every, any real life situation if anyone's trying to boil something down to just two polar opposite options then it's probably wrong like yeah it's just such a i don't know like child level way of looking at the world i don't know it just yes. feels like oh yeah because um, i i do see some kind of um almost like satisfaction in the idea that when we're all dead all the people i hate are going to hell when they they're, they're going to regret disagreeing right. with me but yes. at the same time as soon as i get over that kind of like 6 year old revenge fantasy yes it's actually grim and, and very <laughs> and, and also just stupid like mildly uh, it's so stupid because uh, yeah and it is it, it's that vengeance it's that idea of uh justice as though first of all like that's something that can exist anyway but also like that it definitely means something different for you than like other people and yeah <laughs> just you you have that and that's why that's why the death penalty exists okay yeah <laughs> but i also don't really understand the death penalty as a thing because if you Me neither like, especially, especially from a religious point of view because if you right. believe that there is a heaven and a hell and especially if you're say for example a christian who believes that anyone who believes that jesus has died for their sins is going to heaven then if right. you kill someone they just go to heaven quicker yeah, and you go to hell because you've killed someone. <laughs> like, there's a commandment, I think, about that. Like, that you're not supposed to do it. And it wasn't like a caveat, like, thou shalt not kill unless the government told you that it's okay to kill. Then well, you're good. Yeah, in one of the seven <laughs> states or whatever. Yeah, it's like, 
<laughs> no, I just, it doesn't. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, so um, we uh, we just had a super chat, actually. If you'd like to send in a super chat, that would be amazing. We'll read out your super chats live on air. So we got a comment uh, from Native At Atheist who says, Awesome hosts, I need devil horns. And yeah, yeah so I like your devil horn things. Obviously, <laughs> gonna be for the Halo thing. I should get Halo for next week, maybe. Yes. Yeah, yeah we just attach them on here onto the headphones. Oh, oh yeah. They're attached <laughs> on, they're not growing out of your head. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. I'm working yeah. on it. <laughs> so we actually have a caller. So let's uh move straight into calls. So we're gonna talk to Bobby from Kentucky, who wants to ask why theists divert from the question, what is the proof for God? Is that right, Bobby? Yes. Go uh, for it. Did I word that properly? Y'all uh, having a good day? Great, thanks. Yeah. Go for it. All right. Uh, uh, I, I'm not really uh, a new atheist. I've always, I've since a little kid, I've always uh, what's the best term for it? Um, had doubts about it. Mm. And, um, but I was always forced to go to church up until I was like 16 or 17. Yeah. But, um, I, I just recently started watching like the last year or so started watching a lot of, uh, atheist videos and live streams and stuff. And my thing is when theists get on get on on the live streams or whatever to debate, there never is really a debate. Every time <laughs> every time they they put out their whole argument and then the host of the show will take and counter argue they never do answer those arguments or questions or anything. They always just no. keep pushing their point. Yeah. You, yeah. you see this like so much with all like it, beyond religion, but generally people who have these kind of um, belief systems that they don't really want. They, they didn't reach them by rational thought and evidence. They're things they already believed or they were told when they were younger, or it's just mm -hmm. make, kind of makes sense to them. And they don't, really want to logically go through it because if they logically went through it they wouldn't end up there what they want is to just say stuff that convinces them they don't need to think anymore like it's yes. like a, a little an excuse if i say this then oh, i don't have to think about it anymore mm -hmm. and it goes away and and i you see this so much i mean i do a lot of arguing with idiots on twitter and like oh, how you man. just described it is so true they you know that people will say something and you come up with an a counter argument and they either just say the same thing again as if you hadn't ever said anything, or they just change the subject. Yes. And they're like, where's this argument? And then they all complain that you won't argue with them. Oh, you're too scared to argue. It's like, well, I'm trying to have an argument, and you seem to be just trying to convince yourself that you're already right. Um, yeah. And that's what cognitive dissonance is. Mm. It's putting that space between, like... Ha having to think about it or having to mm -hmm. challenge it's 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 ha it's having the belief and trying to justify the and trying to like work backwards to make it make sense in your head but without having to make it make sense <laughs> yeah and also you yeah, get to see. stay on your like sorry bobby you, you also get to kind of like stay on your team because i think a lot of people exactly see this as kind of like a team thing mm -hmm. and and you know, in, in some way, maybe this show could help break down that kind of them versus us thing. Cause you know, we like to have less confrontational, longer discussions. Um, yeah. but I do like the confrontational ones too, but, um, <laughs> I think that often it's like, Oh yeah, but they're atheists. They're our enemies or they're Muslims. They're our enemies or they're Christians. They're our enemies. And it's like, therefore they have to be wrong. So anything they say, mm -hmm they're trying to trick you or they're stupid or like um mm -hmm. and it's it's the, you just have your little dunk you say your thing it's almost like when you see people who support sports teams and they'll be like yeah we beat you three nil and they're like yeah but we beat you four nil the other time and it's like so you both just have a thing that you say mm -hmm. it's not really yeah. a proof of who's better or any anything it's also um, meant to just like spark that outrage like if they can just keep talking 
shit basically without ever you know providing evidence especially especially on twitter it, it's yeah. you know and then you just get madder and madder and it's not a good look you know <laughs> that's what they want <laughs> trying to frustrate you yeah what were you um adding Bobby? I'll go ahead. No, you go on. Go on. I was no, just I, asking what you thought. Uh, I was um, I was having a a civil conversation with a family member the other day, and I sat there and told them the way I the way I look at religion. Basically, most religion was set up back before we knew any better. Back before we as a society knew any better. And as time progressed, we started finding out stuff through science, through all kinds of processes. We started finding out why lightning happened, why solar eclipses and all this other stuff happened. And we can explain that now. And I told him the way I look at it, basically, when you're a little kid, you believe in Santa Claus. You believe in the tooth fairy. You believe in this and that. But as you get older, you find out your parents were doing it. Family members were doing it. Mm. And that, I told them that's the way religion should be looked at because it, it, <laughs> For real. Oh, I mean, you're right. For real, uh, yes. Yeah. That's what I'm I saying. Agree. Yes, you are so right. It's like, why, why do you stop believing in the tooth fairy your parents told you were real? Why do you stop believing in Santa your parents told you were real? But for some reason, when your parents told you God was real, you keep believing that one? Like, mm. why? Mainly because, <laughs> they, mainly because they want to. Yeah, yeah, it's comforting yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, and that's that's religion in general, right? It's it's you know, it started back before the Bible. It was like all of these myths to explain those things you were talking about, lightning and why, you know, floods happen or all of these little things that happen that, you know, people were like, why does why? Oh, it must be this God or whatever. Um, and then we sort of, you know, evolved. <laughs> And realize like that's not what it is, but for some reason the religion thing stuck, and that's, you know, from my view, it's just this fear of the unknown. It's this fear of dying, of death, not not knowing what happens after, and so being afraid. So it's like we have to come up with an answer. We have to come up with a fantasy that we would love to be true, and then we invest so deeply in it. Um, it's really difficult to let go of that but it's just for control and that's kind of what the people in charge you know are always doing if they can keep you afraid enough they know that they can control you and what's what's the more ultimate mystery fear than death yeah and yeah i mean absolutely me, yeah. and they do it with other things like i mean that's what this kind of culture war stuff is about is finding new excuses to make you afraid of people and things yes. and like you, you should be afraid of dying, and you should be afraid of these scary people who you don't know, and you should be afraid of. It, it does work. It drives to yeah, change exactly. <laughs> and and if you you can also, you know, I think that um, probably most. Oh, I mean, in in history, obviously most are uh, great powers and people in charge had religion as like one of the tools for doing that. Yes, um, and tool. it makes sense to have a state religion if, even if you're an atheist if you're a dictator and you want to control people take up a religion make up your own one or just take a different one and put your own twist on it i mean then you will get I'm more sure support that's been I, done yeah. been done in yeah. history too yeah and i mean that's what they're doing right now um take your religion and put your own twist on it and it's like just going back to everything that jesus taught in the bible it doesn't seem like that's that those those things that, you know, even if you're just looking at the character of Jesus, it was very much about acceptance and love and charity and all these socialist ideas. <laughs> and but yeah. they're putting their own twist on it. And it's same thing with abortion. Like it doesn't talk about abortion in the Bible because they didn't really know about it, except um, you could drink some herbs and have an abortion. And I think there's like a recipe for that. Mm. in the bible and so but somehow the people 
in charge have right. twisted it to their own interpretation to say that like the Bible is against this thing when it's there's not even any proof. There's and even no evidence historically, that... in Christianity, or they haven't the no, they haven't been talking about abortion for hundreds of years. It's just a yeah. recent last century issue. Sorry, Bob, yep. what were you saying? Wasn't the Bible's version of uh, abortion something like uh, throwing babies off cliffs or something like that? That's a separate. <laughs> uh, that's a separate quote from the Bible, but it is a great one. <laughs> yeah, well, I yeah, mean, that's that's a, th it a thing. Whenever I I think of when people say, "Oh, Jesus was nice," and they had all these socialist ideas, like Jesus specifically, the separate Jesus character was. But Jesus is only one third of the Trinity, and another third of it is the Old Testament God, who is a fucking dickhead. And totally, he he is nothing like Jesus. Murdered He's millions like, of people. <laughs> yeah. Literally created the concept of murder. Like he, he's a prick. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the way the way I see it, I mean, I'm not going to take up all your time because I'm pretty sure there's theists that's wanting to call in and argue. Yeah, we've got, we've got some queued up. We've got some queued up. But um, <laughs> the way I see it, yeah, you could be afraid of death. That that just gives you more reason to want to live life. And Hell yeah, Bobby, to, you got it. It's better to live life without extra baggage of worrying what's what's coming next when you're you're more concerned about what you got now. You Absolutely. nailed it. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Bobby. <laughs> That's a, a really good um, closing line to go with. So thank you very much for calling in. Uh, it's really great to hear from you and it started a good conversation hopefully we're going to hear from some uh, theists in a moment and before we do just like to point out there are loads of great ways to support talk heathen and the aca uh which is important because it's you know why we can carry on doing all this stuff um so one cool way you can support us is uh we have merch and um this month is special we're bringing back the top three designs as rated by the fans so apparently these were your favorite three ones uh, what we've got here, we're all atheists um, about the gods that we don't believe in. I just go on further. That is a good quote. Yeah, I've love seen people that talk one. that down, but it's just true. Like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, Fact. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I guess some people believe in like hundreds of gods. So maybe in their case, I go hundreds further, but you, you get the idea. You get the idea. Um, <laughs> yeah so that's pretty cool um if you missed out on getting one before here's your chance because at the end of the month they're going away um, we always have like a special thing so you don't have much time um and you can even get a 10 percent discount if you use the code favorites uh spelt the american way without the u so incorrectly uh and with a capital f i Definitely. think maybe tr try that um you can go visit uh tiny.cc forward slash merch aca to get them um Obviously, we'd appreciate if you liked and subscribed the YouTube vi uh, video and to our channel. It's good to see the channel grow. It helps the algorithm know that we want to turn up in front of more uh, more theists so they call in uh, and talk to us because we do want to hear that. Um, and oh, yeah, and you can enable notifications so you always get the videos so you know when, uh, when you're next going to hear from us too. So that'll be great. Um, you can become a channel member if you click the join button just below the video. Uh, you get custom chat emotes and uh, you help out, you know, help out with the channel. Um, and obviously, as we already said, you can send in a super chat. You can ask a question, you can write a comment, you can, I don't know, write some song lyrics for your favorite death metal song, obviously within the terms and conditions of YouTube. But <laughs> I would appreciate that. I could try and guess which song you're talking about. Um, <laughs> I'm not very good with lyrics. If you could write the tab for a, like a riff. I might be able to guess that. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, you know, send us a super chat. We'll read them out. But anyway, let's move on to our second caller. We are going to talk to um, Jamal in California. And he wants to give us his point of view on being religious. Jamal, go for it. How are you all doing? Great, thanks. Yeah, really good. Good, good, good. good. Well, I just want to mention that, um, you know, I'm Muslim. And I do have uh, a lot of uh, atheist friends. You know, I'm really great with them. No problem at all, you know. Uh, right. I mentioned how my um, Muslim view, how mu a Muslim view of how things came about is uh, far less of a fairy tale 
than the atheist view. So if you tell an, a fairly intelligent kid who is neither religious or atheist, let's just say no, they never heard of religion, and they never yeah. heard of, hey, not believing God. They're just naive, but they're into science, they're into more, they're moral, they're whatever, right? Could it, could it also be an adult who's just never encountered religion? Or does it have to be a kid? Yeah, or an adult. Somebody who's intelligent. Okay, okay. Somebody who's intelligent, yeah. adult, right? If you tell them what, you know, what is more likely, what is more uh, likely, uh, some, uh, you know... Uh, Something came from nothing? Like, is uh, that where you're going? God coming in. <laughs> God, yeah, God coming in to to a an angel and speaking information to an angel and that information is then broadcasted from that angel to a man who then meant, uh, broadcast information to people they record it on a book and the book then is, has, contains all this information all this moral ethics ethics okay this, so that's one uh, option you know, or mm -hmm. what was that? You, you yeah, said so which is more likely, so so that or sorry? Right, right. So I'm not I'm not done yet. Okay, so you know they they have this book and it has all this information, and then the same guy who got who released this book, you know, helped release this book, uh, had no background knowledge, no you know education, not, can't you know can't uh, can't read or write, but. The information is so uh, intelligent compared to all the other information at that time that even 1,400 years later, it's still relevant and it still has uh, no scientific errors. And uh, <laughs> even it hasn't been proven yet. Yeah, so Jamal, yeah, we need give us the other thing. Hang on, hang on. We I know I know the sort of where you're going, but you said what's more likely that so we've we've heard gen like one right. of them is that there's a, a god which already existed, which then talked to an angel, which then talked to a person, which then talked to some that or yeah, yeah. what's I'll, the other I'll, option? Yeah, what's the other thing? I'll 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 finish that part really fast, okay? No, oh, so, I feel like we got it. You've done a lot. Yeah. Come on. We understand what part, you're saying. We can, so we can part, elaborate more in a second. You tell somebody Okay, so the other part is um, like you know that things came out of the, uh, just just things came out of nothing. Like uh, the planet, the world just came about from nothing. That the sun, <laughs> even though it has to be at a yeah, it has to be so. So this is very so Jamal. This is basically hang on a sec. This is basically like you're saying what's more likely, you know, the the story in the Quran or something comes out of nothing. So I guess my first my first response would be uh, like as as a fairly intelligent not encountered religion before person I'll be like I still think it sounds more likely that something come out of nothing that that, yes, that to me would feel like I I get that that seems like magic but the other one also seems like magic and the other one has yeah. a god and an angel and someone who can't read who wrote a book and that <laughs> seems less likely to me than just one single magic incident. However, I would point out that, that they aren't the only two options because that is a false dichotomy. Because obviously, right. as well as the Islam uh, story, um, which are, you know, possibly true, maybe, there's also mm -hmm. the Christian one. So those mm -hmm. those two options, which we could say which is more likely, and I, obviously you believe that the Islam one and a Christian one, a Christian would say they believe the Christian story. Uh, but uh -huh. also, there's I don't think that, um, you know, uh, astro astronomers and stuff would necessarily universally agree with the idea something came out of nothing lots would say oh well, we literally just don't know where the universe came from and i know there is a debate where some people think that the universe has always existed in some form and it grows and shrinks over time and other people think that the idea of a start of the universe isn't uh, a sensible question like it doesn't make sense uh, and and there are lots of different debates to this so if i said to someone who didn't know anything and i was like I, you know didn't know anything about religious and start the universe and they never really thought about it and i said well here are 500 different religions yes. all of which claim the existence of a god but we don't actually have any evidence for any of the gods and then here are like 50 different hypotheses for the creation of the universe not involving a god but we don't really have any evidence for any of them either 
Or you could just say, I don't know, I don't really care. I think they'd pick that. Yeah, same. And and I feel like that's the main one. You know, you're sitting here and you're like, oh, what if what if I told you that there was an angel and it taught and God talked to the angel and then the angel told everybody about it and then they wrote a book, like blah, blah, blah. So, okay, well, what if I told you that um Zeus is as the real God and he started in heaven and he's the one that you know, puts puts the lightning bolts down, and that's the reason why we have lightning. And then he has a son with a human woman, and you know that that son came down to Earth and uh, performed many magical, uh, you know, acts and things. Like he was really strong, and you know, his name was Hercules. Uh, how is that any less feasible than the story that you just told me? Like, why would I choose? the Muslim story over the Christian story, over the Greek myth story, over Norse gods, over uh, the pantheon of Indian uh, gods, you know, why, uh, of, uh, of Hindi, Hindu gods, like why would one make more sense than the other unless that's just the one that you were indoctrinated into when you were born onto this planet? I actually mentioned that earlier because it's the only book. I must have missed it. Scientific information. Right. Oh, I, scientific information. Can you explain to me the scientific information in the Quran, please? Like, for example, it mentioned how uh, ants could talk and make a, uh, you know, make a talk and all that. And for uh, many years, that yes. was never um, a fact. People thought it wasn't a fact, it was rubbish. No, but I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not so convinced that because I don't. Because, yeah, I don't think that I, people thought I, it was rubbish. I am a fan of ants. Um, well, and when I was a kid, I used well, to just sit discover. and watch them. I like. I I agree or that like, okay, we this. we knew. Hang on a sec. We knew that. Uh, like we didn't know that ants had like pheromones that they communicate with, and they drop down a trail. Like you know the exact mechanism because that's something we've only recently discovered. So if the if the Quran says, did you know ants lay pher pheromone trails and pick it up using their antennae and they actually have like 15 different ones and there's even a pheromone which aphids used to communicate which can cause them to fly. And that was in the Quran. Like, oh cool, when did they find that out? Like a long time before then I, you know, early in the But to say ants communicate, I mean, as a child, I remember watching them and they go up and they do this little, this little thing and then they go off mm -hmm. and like, they've got to be talking. They got to be saying ant language mm -hmm. because, I mean, they they're so organized and they yes. look like they're talking. So I I think that the specific specificity that how specific mm -hmm. it is is what's important. If if the Quran says something like the speed of light is very fast, you're like, ah, oh, how did it know? Well, it's like, yeah, you know, it is very fast. But if it says it's like nine point whatever it is, time tens to the eighteen, you know, you know, if it's got the the decimal places and then suddenly it's a bit more interesting. And I do feel like, I don't know about this claim, maybe you could even read the bit out where it says about the ants, but I have a feeling it's going to be on the less specific, the kind of thing I noticed when I was a kid side, rather than the more specific side. Right, Perhaps. like what you can just observe by looking and watching. There is so many facts on it. Um, okay, that's just- here's oh, Please give us some more. Yeah, it perhaps a different Here's one. the thing about the Quran. It's and I, you know I don't want to like uh, bombard you guys with all this information. I could bring up so much all day, but the thing with the Quran, is not a scientific <laughs> okay. But the fact that it has this information that's uh, you know uh, you know maybe it might not be super super to the you know the numbers and this and this, but the fact that it brings up information, for example, about like salt water and uh, fresh water not mixing. And not being able to mix, and there's all this information that was salt water and fresh water do mix. It's called brackish water. Yeah, it happens all the time. Some thing. fish can only live in brackish water. Ian, you know, but um, there's another. I actually don't know. So, sorry, I'm mean, sorry to cut you off, Jamal. I actually don't know this one. Uh, yeah, what, what is this about salt water and fresh water not being able to mix? I, I don't even know what the, the the point you're referring to is. But just from my own interest. What? What what is this? Because uh, I like, I've put salt in water and mixed it. Like you can you can yeah all it. the time. So, what do you mean? Like there's a passage that mentioned that there's um 
uh, the, the, the fresh, fresh water and seawater never mix. I'm sorry, fresh water and seawater. So, like, they never mix. It's, um, like, yes, they at the, at the end of a river, so like, don't, they, don't they mix at the end of a river when a river hits the sea? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but what I'm saying, like, visually, like, okay, there's areas around the world where there is, like, there's fresh water and uh, seawater. Do you see them? And they're never, yeah. like, they're not, like, all of a sudden mixed. They're, there's, like, this barrier. Okay. No, but that, where are you it's, getting it's, that it's from? A gradient. It's a gradient, and when sometimes the tide's coming in, then the, the gradient will move further up the river. And there is many, the many there. evidence. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, there's very, barely there's <laughs> a lot of evidence that I could point out that uh, that are so many that uh, Islam talks about that. There's Listen, no I know that you think you're making a point by just saying I have all this evidence that I can point out, but you're not doing it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I so feel point like out when, the you, evidence. when you said there's loads of evidence and then your first two examples aren't the best. Are not evidence. Yeah, well, the, first two, the, the first one, for example, you did, you, if I'm, I'm going to point out the evidence, I know you are, what you're going to say. You're going to say, oh, it's not specific. I point out about the uh, ants and how ants were... They were you, speaking and then you can to... watch ants and see that behavior like anyone well, can do that you know like the reason i point out this specific thing is because if god is real god knows literally everything like god knows all the decimal places to pi even though it's irrational and infinite like th this is just trivial basic information he created these things so why wouldn't it be like what when you know lots of the holy books not just uh the quran but others you know you often see these things where they talk about you know um they'll say oh this it was this okay, far or something and it's I'll never you, why don't you get these why is it never precise or really specific hello hello let me give you another one okay hello okay sure go for hello? another one third try lucky yes so uh, if you want another one, I'll give you another one. Because, but I know you're going to say, okay. So, for example, the idea of this. We know what you're going to say, too. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I don't. I, I want to hear a new one. <laughs> Sorry? There's one. It says, and we have built the heaven with might, and we continue to expand it. So that's an example of the universe expanding. Is, is the heavens the universe? Okay. I thought they were separate. The heavens, yeah. The heavens, is, yes, are the universe. So, like, when we one. go to heaven, we're just going to be floating out in space? Or, like, stars and galaxies no. and stuff? No? no? So when we go to heaven, are we going to be, like, sitting on clouds? And, like, like if we kill ourselves for our religion, do we get 72 virgins yeah, in the cloud the land? Or what does it look like? Wow. God knows. Well, I'll tell you something. Let me give you all your point of view, okay? You're talking about my point of view and how, uh, you know, okay. you're trying to just discuss this. But I'm like, ready. The idea, of, uh, the idea of, like, Earth just coming about. The sun, do you know the sun has to be an exact uh, distance from Earth or else we'll be either burned to death or cold and die? Right? Yeah, oh, yes, I do know about this one. Actually. How can that just be out of nowhere? <laughs> it just answer me. How can that just come out of nowhere? That's just, uh, that's. It un makes so you uncomfortable are, to think that, doesn't it? There are, right there. Jamal, Jamal, there are fairy tale. billions of planets, billions of planets in the universe. Like so uh -huh. many, your brain cannot comprehend it. So some of them are right. going to be in a stupid position and in a position where we couldn't have life. I mean, in our solar system, we have many examples of planets. Which, Mercury yeah, is way mm -hmm. too Mercury is way too close to the sun to even have an atmosphere. So there are loads of planets. There were, there's probably a billion planets in the same position as Mercury, and none of them are going to have life on, like impossible. And there are loads like further as far away as Jupiter, and they're all too cold. And there are billions of those. But there are so many different combinations, possible combinations, just from random chance. That there are loads of planets within, it's called the Goldilocks zone. But what's interesting about this, this Goldilocks zone, which is the only place in where you get liquid water and uh, an atmosphere. We had, so there's actually loads of other special conditions about the Earth. Like it needs to have um, a magnetic core in order to uh, create a, um, like a shield, basically, from the sun's harmful rays, which would otherwise destroy life. So there's, lo there's lots of interesting stuff. The interesting thing about the Goldilocks zone is 
if you were God and you were creating this one special planet and then for some reason creating like 10 trillion other planets for no reason at all that we're never even going to see, if you made this one special planet, to me, it would make sense to put it in the middle of the Goldilocks zone, like bang in the center, the 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 peak point for you know liquid water and, and life to thrive and the temperature at which all life would do better. But that isn't where the Earth is. Like we're in, we're in this range, but we are not exactly in the middle of it. Um, I can't remember which side of it we're on, but I mean, you can just go and look it up. But I I just feel like that's one of those things where it's just like, why wouldn't? I mean, obviously God could just pick anything, but why? Why would he? Why would he pick one that's like to the edge of the perfect zone? Like if we were shifted more towards the middle, perhaps life would thrive even more on this planet. Don't question what God does. Question like <laughs> what? Why not? Uh, the un the un. Think about think about how how like the idea of uh, our, our everything like our systems and our and ourselves, our bodies, our cells. Mm. You're saying. That Do you think that we haven't thought about these things? Like that's the whole point is that we have thought about these things. Think about how intelligent it is. Like the the, the cells. The Think about it. Do you think it's not that good, three, mate. Do you think you know, it would just come out of nowhere? If I tell you, if I bring children, you a phone, yes, yes, I do. I bring you a phone. It's less complex. It's less complex than um, it's less complex than a a uh, human, obviously. And you and, and I tell you, you know what? It came out of nowhere. You'll be like, you're out of your mind. And you're telling no, me, no, that that's such a poor argument. Billions <laughs> of cells. Each one has each, each cell has a freaking factory. Each cell has yeah, a factory. The, and the you're problem with the, even the problem with this intelligent design argument is I feel like there's only really two options here. There's uh well, I mean there's there's multiple different explanations from like the sort of scientific perspective. Um, but it's basically did life emerge without a creator or stupid design? Because there's not really intelligent design because there's just so many problems. Like if I was designing creatures to worship me because I had an ego problem and I needed that for some reason, <laughs> then why would I make it so that some of them die of cancer in childhood? Or why would I make it so they can't breathe underwater? We can't fly. Like there's so many things. There was there are other animals that are just better than us at everything. Like eagles have better eyes. Why would I just be like, oh, I'm going to give the eighth, eightieth percentile eyes to my dream creations? Like, there's so many bad. Like an example that I, I don't know. It's it's a bit of a horrible example to bring up, but like humans sometimes, and it's fucking horrific, rape each other, and that is horrific. God created humans to be able to do that because He also created hyenas which can't, they physically cannot do that. It's not an action that hyenas can do to each other because of how uh, their genitals are constructed. So why did God make it so we can? Like that, I, and you say don't question God, but I think that's a valid question to ask because it is fucking horrific. And yet apparently, according to you, the most intelligent being of all time created, specifically created us to be able to do that. Um, and to suffer from it, it was how is that intelligent? A stupid design, bad design. I could design humans better than this. Death. I wouldn't give us. Well, um, uh, I wouldn't even give us internal organs. Like, why would you? Why do we need organs? I'm a magic hmm. space wizard. I I'll just be like these. You know, they can. They just be, be indestructible. They're all just like Ditto from Pokemon, and they don't need to get <laughs> plastic surgery. They can just look like whatever they want. <laughs> Or they don't get sick. Why do we have sickness? Yeah. Like, and not Why would even you create like, that? If you had sickness as a punishment, even, that might make, if you're sadistic, that makes some kind of sense. But you're just applying sickness randomly to people, sometimes to babies. And they suffer and die. So, or, or even. Okay. Like this to, Can I talk now? And, and not even just diseases. Yeah. But also just like genetic conditions. Yeah. Sorry, Jamal. Yeah, go genetic. Ahead. Yeah. Okay, so here's my thing. You're saying uh, what God created, the suffering He created. He creates, you know, p potential people for they have end up having cancer. You know, there's so much yeah. harm in the world. There's Arbitrarily, the world. Why do we? Why should we have like uh, features we don't want? Why should we have this? Right. So you're saying that yeah. as your way of combating. 
oh, um, this complexity that we I see all around me, this unbelievable complexity that uh, it's functioning out of no, uh, somehow it's functioning out of nowhere. Somehow this extreme complexity, it's functioning out of nowhere. That's, but you, you think that's, uh, uh, you uh, think that's well, I, 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 I totally hear avoiding you're... the question. <laughs> yeah. So basically, there's there's two arguments here. Well, One is the like intelligent design argument, and I was saying it it can't be intelligent design because it's badly designed. But I guess you're also trying you or maybe now instead or maybe all along yeah. you're trying to make the argument that there are other complicated things, and like I accept that smartphones were designed, but I don't accept that you know amoeba were designed. So why is that? That looks like a contradiction. And I guess the re my answer to that is, I know that phones were designed because, well, I, I happen to be an electronic engineer and I actually design computer chips for a living. So I know that, that that happens because I've done it. Like I've seen it. I've <laughs> met people who have literally built these chips. I've watched videos about the entire production process. I studied it for my degree. So I know I know for a fact that they it was designed. But if I if I was to like you know, I, I was on, um, I was recently in Portugal, it was amazing, saw some amazing, like, rock faces and stuff. And some of them, you know, sometimes you see this rock sort of thing, and you're like, has this been created naturally? Or have humans done it? Like, there was this kind of tunnel thing, and it, it kind of looked a bit too smooth to have happened naturally, but it also looked kind of a bit too wonky to be drilled out by a machine. So I... I literally didn't know if it was created by a human or by God because I didn't have an example. I'm not a geologist. I don't know anything about rocks in, in Portugal. And so the only way I can really know for sure is to compare it to stuff that I do know for a fact. Like I know this cup was created because it's made of plastic because I know the process to make cups, but I don't know the process to make rock formations. So I guess that's my answer to your question. Yeah, like I said, it's, um, you know, believing in God is the right way because, and not a, a God, <laughs> but a God that has um, sent in God. information that has not been unproven. Like, I'll give you an example for the Quran, okay? 80% uh, of the Quran that has been uh, found out in terms of, like, scientific information, 100% of it has been Correct. A hundred percent of it has been correct. So there's only twenty percent left. So if a hundred percent of Man. it, hundred percent of eighty percent has been correct, uh, is, is good. Hundred uh, percent of eighty percent. Okay. There's reason to believe it's going to be good too, because it just that information hasn't been uh, to the level that uh, science, if I... all that. Oh, just because you keep repeating it doesn't make it any more true. You know, come about. I didn't repeat if this part. Me, How's that repeating? If me and Sin wrote a book and it was literally jammed full of scientific facts and then we also claimed that we were God at the end, would, would that mean that because you saw, I mean, 99% of ours was facts and then 1% at the end was like, Katie and Sin are the gods and have created this pretty cool hell that you might actually want to go to. <laughs> then... um. Would you be like, well, the first 99 lines were correct, so... Well, look at it this way. If you, if the information that you provided, no. for example, to the people, uh, yeah. it um, it, read, it resonates in people's hearts and, and makes people think, you know what? This, and this is unbelievable true. This is true. This is... This is uh, because it makes me feel good? I like the way this makes me feel, yeah, so it, it must be true. Good. Why is it good? Why? How is it objectively good? When in the Quran it says that like you can have child brides, like that's okay, and it says that uh, you that women cannot like show the tops of their heads, and they can't have rights that you know other human beings get to have. Like, so that is all correct. You you agree with all of that? You think women should Man. cover their faces and bodies? It's reason behind that. 
Women, uh, it's, it's saying cover the head. It's for modesty. They know men. Yes, men. Right. we must be modest <laughs> because men cannot control themselves. If you just exist as a woman, a man cannot control himself. So he will assault you and rape you. So it's your job to keep covered, which because you want to be modest, because that's what's important. If you want to get into Muslim heaven, don't ever show a shoulder or an ankle. I do not accept that. Like, I reject that. And I don't see any good reason why any person would choose to believe that particular fairy tale that keeps, uh, that oppresses an entire you know half of the human population. Like, how is that okay? How do you justify that? Okay, then you're sorry. You're like crazy. Then you you're can't. 100,000, 100, you're calling 100,000 uh, Americans who convert to Islam. Crazy. There's a lot of Americans. A lot of yep. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, I am. It's, it's I didn't even say they were. Hold on. I didn't say they were crazy. I said I. I think that there are wrong. issues with their beliefs. <laughs> yeah. I, if you I want think, to choose um, your own oppression, though, go for this it. This is. Uh, this has been a good discussion, Jamal. I know we've we've had a little bit of a spicy banter, but I think it's been good. So, I, I feel like we could talk for ages and. It'd be great if you could call back on another show. Uh, like I, I would more than happy to talk to you. I know that some of our hosts have been saying in the chat just now they'd love to talk to you. Please do call back. I'm sorry we're going to have to let you go now just because we've got more callers to fit in. But thank you very much for the discussion. I Also, sorry if I feel like I've cut you off there without redemption sin. I, I know that like when someone's always no, like, no, you're good. Oh, actually, I'm going to justify why women are second-class citizens. And I'm like, yes. Ugh. and then someone's like, right, let's move on. I'm like, no, I want to shout at them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so we're, we're going to move on to some new callers but first uh just point out that we actually have uh, a patreon that you can uh, sign up to which is uh pretty cool patreon's a good website uh to support us on that you can go to tiny.cc forward slash patreon th and you can get all the cool patreon -y stuff that goes on on patreon you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> if you would like to listen to this show and all of the other ACA shows, then you can go to tiny.cc forward slash AEN podcasts. And there we have all of the podcasts of all of the different shows. There is loads of ACA shows and they're all pretty good. None of them are as good as Talk Heathen, but you know, they're all pretty good. Um, so it's worth listening to uh, once you've listened to all of the Talk Heathen episodes with me on. Um, you can become part of the Talk Heathen community on our fan-run Facebook page at tiny.cc forward slash FBTHG and uh, get into some arguments. I mean, we're talking about, I think, were we talking about Twitter in the show or, or before the show? I don't know. We're talking yeah, about Twitter. Before. It's the place where you can argue. There is also a Talk Heathen Twitter account. Um, and Facebook is another place in which you can have a discussion and a disagreement with your fellow human beings. Um, and also, fun announcement, we do have a TikTok. Uh, and uh, I know that um, just before the show, Richard Gilliver was uh, baiting some people to call in. So um, well, shout out to Richard for doing that. But it's it's a cool place uh, to go and watch some ACA content. Um, but yeah, let's let's move on to our next uh, next caller. We, we've actually got loads of callers queued up. So Yay. let's have a go. Um I don't know if you can see the list. Do you have a favorite if you can see the list? If not, I'll just pick no, one. No, no, I can't see the list okay. this morning. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> <I'll> quick, <laughs> I better just quickly read them all. Um, let's... Um, 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 um. Oh, okay, we've got one here. That's uh, So we're going to talk to Will in Kansas, who says theists and atheists are both wrong. So oh, A yeah. and not A is both false. Okay, Love it. interesting. Will, go for it. Yes. How you, how you guys doing today? Great, awesome. thanks. Uh, I want to say... How are uh, wrong? Good, good. Um, uh, well, um, first off, I want to say, Sin, I'm a huge fan. But aside from Aww. that... Um, <laughs> um, Thank you. I, I, I follow the, uh, the Clarence Darrow theory. Clarence Darrow once said, I am an agnostic. I do not pretend to know what ignorant men are sure of. Now, <laughs> you guys are right. You can't prove that God is real. But at the same time, you can't prove that he's not real either. Because oh, yeah. I mean, we, I, pretty much, I agree. we concede to that, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So when you say atheist, I mean, there is a third option, which is what I am, which is an agnostic. I acknowledge that 
We don't know. And we may never well, know. And actually, we find out in death, who knows? Well, if you break down the word itself, actually, so atheist just means without belief in a God, and a agnostic just means without knowledge of a God. So it's really the same position. Atheism and agnosticism is pretty much the same, the same thing. Oh, it just means I, that I, you yeah, don't I, I believe. Agree with I think this is like... I'm sorry, kind of, I'm uh, sorry. Um, this is okay. I think this is just I kind agree of with uh, the, like the a word... Yeah, I think this is kind of just like a word, almost like a word game argument, not accusing you of, of playing games or anything, Will, but I mean, like this <laughs> just seems to be um, uh, a disagreement over what exactly the word means. Because when, if I say I'm an atheist and you hear in your mind someone who believes for a fact that there isn't a God, then I am communicating that wrong to you because I am an atheist and that is how I would describe myself. But really, when I say that, what I want to tell you is I am not convinced of any gods at all, none of them. But also, I'm not convinced for sure that there definitely isn't a god. And that's what I want to communicate. And the reason I use the word atheist is, like Sin was saying, it to me means like atheistic, as in not someone who believes in a god. And it's basically, it it's kind of relates to um, something we talk about a lot, which I guess is like the, the burden of proof and, um, you know, who should be justifying and explaining their position and this isn't an attempt for me to worm out something this is me saying there is a position which is the theistic position which is the claim i believe in a god and i am saying you need to give me evidence of that or i'm not going to agree with you and if someone else came up and they said here is my position i am certain there is no god then i am actually going to take the same stance and say well, you're going to have to provide evidence for that for me because I'm not convinced of that either. And so those people would probably call themselves atheists because they are. They don't believe in a God, but they're also kind of, they're like a subset of atheists. And I know sometimes people use the term strong versus weak atheism, or sometimes people only use the word atheist for that, or it's fine, really. I mean, I, I, I'm happy to argue about the words and what the words mean, um, <laughs> but I I don't know. I think I'm more interested in the position and the claim. And if you will want to say you don't, you aren't convinced there's a God, but also you're not convinced there isn't a God. I'm like, yeah, me and you're on the same team. I agree. Yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah. I, I just know with my experience, um, anyone that has, has come up to me and said they're atheist, they're sure there is no God. And so if that's some are, why yeah. I always yeah. say I'm an agnostic is because I'm, you know, I, I, I can't, I don't know. And you don't know. And nobody knows. Yeah. There's no way to tell. Yeah. Just like you were saying well, earlier I, about, uh, about the, like the big bang theory and all that. It's like, we don't know. We don't know what started, what it all started. Yeah. So what, what I might suggest yeah. is I, I like, I, I totally understand where if someone comes up and they say, I'm an atheist and I know for sure there isn't a God and you want not to be, I don't really, I'm not the same as this person. So I'm going to say agnostic. That's conceding the ground to them. Instead, you should be like, I am an atheist. I do not believe in any gods. <laughs> but also, I don't believe your position. So I'm a whatever you are. So you can't have the word atheist. <laughs> like, you are an atheist, but you, you need your own term for this thing that I don't agree with, which is the strong claim there is no god. So convince me of that, please. <laughs> and then yeah. they might be like, oh, well, now I need my own term. And then we can steal the term atheist off them. That'd be great. <laughs> right. Because that's what I think, too, is the people who make that claim, I know for sure there's no God. It's it's like, well, so clearly you're an atheist, but you go like that step further, basically saying I know for sure anything. <laughs> I would be like, probably you don't, though. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And um, uh, I, something else I kind of wanted to mention um, when you were talking earlier to Jamal about uh, about the intelligent design and you were saying stuff about cancer and stuff like that, just the basic design of the human body is flawed. I mean, tremendously yeah, flawed, absolutely. you know, just the there fact are lots of flaws. It's crap. Right. It's crap. And tons of flaws, just the way it is. You know, why do we have organs that don't do anything like the appendix? You know, you take right. it out, it, you know, people work the exact same. And then, like, uh, why are our lungs lower than uh, our noses? You know, like a, like a dog walking on four mm -hmm. legs, 
um, if he's got congestion, it comes right out of his nose. Whereas as for us, it just dribbles right back into our into our chest, into our lungs. Uh, uh, and so, dogs are yeah, a good example. You know, dogs are a good thing, example. Totally flawed. Because dogs are oh, yeah. cuter than us. They're happier than us. Right. They, they just have a better time. They'll just eat like mud off the floor. They don't care. Dogs yeah. are having a great god. Dogs are God's chosen people, I think, really, rather than yeah. uh, any human species. <laughs> because, like, and, you know, come on, they're obviously having the best time. <laughs> and I mean, it's just like before it's intelligent design or whatever. It's like before when you brought up genetic diseases. It's like, imagine just being born into this world, you all, and just built into your code is something that's going to kill you or fuck your life up real bad. And it's like that you did, you haven't even had a chance to sin yet, like, and you're already punished. <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah. just total garbage. Uh, yeah. Well, and you can also yeah. also bring the uh, the trans argument into that too. You know, about people that that think that they're born into the wrong bodies. You know, I mean that whole that whole thing right there. Why is that being? Uh, why is that even being allowed? Why aren't they born in the right body to begin with? Right, you mean you know if God I mean? if God was doing it properly, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I guess exactly. when I when I uh, talk to um, theists about that, sometimes like just just as a point about talking about trans rights with theists, uh, I, I guess it's not quite related to what you said, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Um, <laughs> but sometimes I feel like you can say, oh well, you know, why didn't God just make trans people properly in the first place? You know, and then they kind of sometimes might read from that. You're saying my God has made a mistake. My God can't make mistakes. Therefore, trans people must be crazy. That's that's the argument they will usually make back. Or they'll be like, well, trans people are created correctly and they're trying to go against God or whatever. So instead, I usually say to them, because for sure, if I'm feeling like arguing about God, then with a religious person, whatever you disagree on always ends up coming back to God. You know, you argue about abortion, you argue about trans rights, you argue about, you know, what days of the weekend or whatever anything it'll come back to god and that's a big discussion and you have to tear apart someone's entire worldview in order for them to yes. win over so instead i often right. say to them well obviously god gives everyone different challenges in life and for some people he's chosen that they have to you know be born in a poor country for some reason and work for one dollar a day whereas some people he's chosen the struggle of changing sex and gender and then they might be like oh that's cool and of course i won't then immediately bring up about how immoral that is and how the god that created them is therefore evil and how there are some <laughs> people in fact who are uh, less than one dollar a day and are trans at the same time mm. but i think sometimes you just need to win over a little bit of empathy with them mm. um, but i think too yeah. that like that very idea of necessarily saying that that a trans person was born into the wrong body, like the wrong body. Mm. It's uh, that's saying that, I don't know. I feel like that's making assumptions like a step too far. It's kind of like, it, like, Oh God doesn't make mistakes. So then trans people must be fine in his eyes. Right. Cause he doesn't mm. make mistakes. Like, do you know what I mean? And I don't think it's necessarily the wrong body. I think it's maybe just like, I don't feel comfortable in this body. So mm. I'm going to try to find yeah. ways to my make myself feel comfortable in this body, in this society where I have to present myself as something. I guess I have to choose, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's like, I better choose the thing that like makes me feel comfortable in my own body, whatever that looks like. Cause it's not even that, like, there's tons of uh, non-binary people out there that are also a vast spectrum of gender expression. And so, you know, it just isn't, this black and white thing and they try to use genes like that like chromosomes but there's a wide variety of spectrum in chromosomes as well and so just looking at someone and being like i can tell exactly how they're meant to present to the world it's like you can't though and also your your god story it doesn't doesn't add up the, you yeah. basically started a bigotry because it makes you uncomfortable and then found your way to it, you know, uh, trying to use God. the Bible yeah, like God, or whatever. God doesn't even <laughs> mention trans people. Yeah. Well, at least the Christian God doesn't mention trans people even once. So um, just making all these assumptions about what yeah. he would think. 
<laughs> I mean, right. God obviously uh -oh. created trans people because he created everything, and he obviously wrote everything he knows in the Bible and didn't mention trans people. So basically, what he's saying is anything trans people do goes fine. That there's yeah. no laws for trans people. If you're trans, do what the fuck you want. God said <laughs> nothing. You're not even, in, you know, you can hey. cover anyone's oxen. Cover the fuck out of that oxen. Do what you want. <laughs> the Ten Commandments yeah. don't apply to you. Go wild. Hey. Dinosaurs weren't mentioned either, so you know. <laughs> yeah, weird, right? <laughs> Pretty odd. Yeah, I, 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 I do have another question for you. I do have another uh, question for you. Yeah, good, good. And, and just a quick one. Can answer this. It's real quick. It's real quick. Um, yeah. Okay. If if God is infallible and has a plan for everything, but man has free will, what happens oh, yeah. <laughs> if the two conflict? I, I think, think they're the always conflicting. That, yeah, I think the answer to that is to uh, change the subject and then start raising your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's, it's the, I mean, this also uh, is interestingly a discussion um, in, I guess, outside of religion. There's also this argument about if we know all of the starting states of all of the particles in your entire body and we knew all of the the momentums if we had all of the information about every single aspect of you could we predict what you're about to do and if so then you don't have free will and if is that true not just obviously for people but for every is everything in the universe deterministic or not is there some random elements and if there are random elements mm -hmm. is the decisions you're making just predict like deterministic with a like random number generator or is there some other kind of factor that's a really interesting discussion, but I think when you when you're doing that discussion, and you're talking about particles and stuff. It's like, oh, we don't know. Let's find out. But when it's God, it's like, well, we know, and we know it's a logical contradiction. And no, you're not allowed to ask us about it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, these are the big <laughs> questions that are really fun for atheists to just mm -hmm. talk about these things and try to, you know, come up with answers that we're never gonna have, but they're fun ideas to play around with. And, but for a lot of people. These are the questions that frighten them and they would rather just shut it down and have it answer. And that's how we end up here. We yeah, show like talk then. Of... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, thanks. Uh, th I should, I should, let's just do a little bit more discussion on that because I was going to say there is another caller who wants to talk about free will and I think maybe if we elaborate a little bit more here, then I don't know. I don't want to say we went to Narrow it down but, for the call. Yeah, yeah. but um, I, Thank you. you're saying about you're saying about um, being afraid. I understand that people are afraid of these things. Like, sure. I understand that people are afraid that they might not have free will or that or all this kind of stuff. And for some reason, they get comfort in both like almost destiny, but also in the fact that they have their own decision. I don't. I, I maybe I'm just a very <laughs> anxious person, but the idea that the whole universe is deterministic kind of means I'm like, oh, the pressure's off me then, isn't it? Like, that's just. <laughs> Just gonna happen anyway. Just exist. Yeah. Don't worry about I'm anything just, else. Just exist. I'm just riding for it and enjoying the the smells and the sights on the way. But if if it's I mean, like pretty much, yeah. And if, if <laughs> whereas if you are free to do whatever you want, and God is judging you for it, like that's horrible, isn't it? I mean, I must yes. have done something that God's been like, nah, mate, <laughs> that wasn't the one. And if if that's the case, oh, I don't know. Don't I don't like that. That's much more scary. Um, so, but yeah, yeah I know, being I think judged good... and shamed and carrying that, that shame and judgment around with you every single day. And <laughs> there's always someone watching you, judging you, but I need that motivation to be a good person. Otherwise <laughs> I'll just be killing people all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know me, classic a moral yeah. killing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was that Will? I said it's just another form of mind control. Absolutely. The shame. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yes. thanks for your call. It was a good discussion. And uh, we'd love to hear from you again. I, I do like free yeah. world discussions. Yeah. But, thank um, you, uh, Will. And thank you for being a fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, talking <laughs> of fans, we just had another super chat. And it was from James Cool, who says, yes. nothing really interesting to say. Well, cool. You're saying that's 
Uh, but also say, <laughs> but I wanted to give some love for Sin and Katie. Nice to see you again. So yeah, thank you very thank much. You. That's very kind. Mm -hmm. um, and also some other cool fans. We have the top five patrons of the week. Would you like to read these out, Sin? Would you like to do the honors? Oh, yes. Love them? to. All right. So the top five patrons this week, we're going to start with, well, it's got to be my favorite because it's Dingleberry Jackson. Thank you so much, Dingleberry. And <laughs> number, <laughs> number two, uh, number two is Ayame. Number three is Oops, All Singularity. Number four is Devor Valjean. And number five is Kalevi Helvetti. So thank you all so much for being the top five patrons and also honorable mention. Thanks to Courtney Cody as well. Thank you very much. Very exciting. You should go and check out the Patreon at tiny.cc forward slash Patreon TH and then you too can be on that list and you can get a special thanks like Dingleberry just did. Like Dingleberry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can also, while you're in proper ACA mode and letting it just consume you, like you could just live your entire life ACA. We have so much stuff going on at the moment. You can check out the newest episode of the flagship show for the ACA the non-profits and that will air at 3 p.m central time today at tiny.cc forward slash ytnp um you can also just keep up to date what's going on we have a website www.atheist-community.org and that's got all the policies and all that kind of stuff that people always love to read small print but it's also got cool information <laughs> about what's going on and uh, you can join in the community, maybe come volunteer and uh, help out. Um, and also you could email us and give us some feedback. We've got an email address, which is tv at atheist-community.org. And you can be like, Katie and Sim are the best two hosts we've ever had. All the rest should be fired. Yeah. Um, but they should do all the shows. I think that would be <laughs> an, an anonymous email, definitely not sent from me, that, that they may well receive. Uh, <laughs> Right, we can move on to another caller. So I was quite interested in this one, which is Anderson from North Carolina, who wants to talk about the best way to answer the no true Scotsman fallacy. What does that mean uh, to you, Anderson? Are you there? If you're talking, you're on mute. I hope you're there. We'll just give you a couple of seconds just to find the unmute button. Oh no, it's because I said it was interesting. <laughs> right, okay. Nah, it looks like we might... <laughs> no, Anderson, your interestingness has broken the line. We might come back to you later, but we're going to oh. return you to the queue and we're going to... Oh no, okay, right. Was Did we just it? hear a sound then? Okay, we're bringing Anderson back. Anderson, can you hear us? Oh yeah. Can... yeah. Hello, right. Right, you're on. Go for it. What did you want to talk about? No true Scotsman fallacy. Yeah, so um, I've been an atheist for a number of years, and uh, I just recently told one of my friends, and uh, he's been trying to... <sighs> Did you we lose quiet, you? Anderson. Did we lose you again? Um, oh, no. Oh, no, you're back. There you are. Okay. We didn't hear you. Okay. Have you got bad connection, or what's going on? Oh, I'm very sorry, Anderson. I think uh, if it's uh, this bad connection, we're going to have to. You're going to have to call in another week. I'd like to have this discussion um, because I, I think that the No True Scotsman. Like, I kind of want to know what you mean by the best way to answer it, but we'll have to find out another week. Um, so I guess we're going to. Well, I don't know. Do Do you want to talk more about free will, or do you want to hear about the Abrahamic gods? Which, oh which my you... gosh, Abrahamic gods. That sounds okay. Right. So Darius in California um, thinks that uh, his argument disproves the Abrahamic God. Oh. Darius, go for it. Yes, hello. 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 Um, hey, uh, so, yeah, I got an argument that I believe disproves the Abrahamic God. Um, and I haven't heard anyone use this argument before, so I just coined it. Um, the logical problem of perfection. Uh, so I'll just need you all to just um, like play the part of the like any 
any Abrahamic God believer of your choosing. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. You're going to hell. Okay, got it. All right. <laughs> hell is real and you're gonna burn there. All right, all right. Okay, Thank good you. for it, Darius. But um so <laughs> premise one. God exists. Okay. Hello? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep, gotcha. Oh, and um just agreed. For for the uh, if you agree with the premise, just say yes, and if not, you can say no, and then we can discuss why you don't. So I, I'll go on to premise two. Premise two: uh -huh. God can't defy the laws of logic. Uh, I don't know about hmm. that one really. I I I don't know. I genuinely Depends don't know what, what most theists would say. I think that um, some might just say he can. So if, some would say God can do anything. You say he. Mm. You say he can. Okay, so then, I mean, if they agree, if they disagree with that, I would just go into, you know, what I'm saying an explanation of, uh, like, okay, so if they say God can defy the laws of logic, I would just say so God can do things like he can sin and he can't sin at the same time. He can do things yeah. like lie and not lie. Yeah, the, the example yeah. that. We had before the show actually we were discussing this someone said can god make a burrito too hot for him to eat <laughs> <laughs> right and so when, whenever i hear questions like that most most theists answer well the theists that i've seen um most theists answer like no god can only do things that's logically possible like with the question can god make a rock that's too heavy for him to lift then they just say that no he he can only do things that's logically possible because that doesn't make sense you know what i'm saying at least that's what I hear. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I so think did the he most understand why someone? So did he not uh, give What's his that? son the power to turn water into wine? Like, because that to me doesn't seem logically possible. Or his his yeah his blood that, into yeah. wine as well, like the transmutation thing. Can he can he do that or yeah, not? I mean, <laughs> Sorry, I'm like jumping back on your side now. I, I forgot. I have to be a Christian. Okay. Yeah. Be so a, that's the question a, I'm asking person. myself. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know if that would be. Yeah, I was about to say I don't know if that would be a logical contradiction since it's it's not it's not water and not water. It would just be water and then something else. So I don't really think that. But yeah, yeah. Right. You mean like raw logical uh, contradictions? Two, yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Specific. Got you. So. So premise two, would y'all y'all agree God can't defy the laws of logic? If you plan a part we'll, of a we'll give you time. that one. I think I think if okay. you delivered it in this way, where you're like, oh, do you agree with this? Do you could they'll have a massive argument about this and they'll stop you getting to the next one. So I think it might be best to just be like, obviously God can't break the rules that God created, right? And they'll be like, yeah. And then you can be like, right, mm -hmm. cool, next. <laughs> but yeah, any case, do it. Hit us with okay, premise three. Okay. Okay, premise three. God is all perfect. Yep, that's I, I true. Think I think Christian would say yes. <laughs> Actually true. Okay. <laughs> okay, got it. God. Okay, premise four. God is an all perfect creator. So some yeah. of these premises are kind of repetitive just to like really drive mm. the point home because sometimes, you know, um, people could not only just see it, but people could kind of get uh, like at the end, they'll be like, "No, I didn't agree to that, but you did." So I like to kind of <laughs> yeah. So okay. Went home with these uh, premises. Okay, so agreed on yep. premise four. Obviously. Okay, got it. I always say that um, about God. Premise. <laughs> <laughs> premise five. God created everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. Including mayonnaise, because he hates people. <gasps> Oh, we've just we just found out that we're not friends. <laughs> Live on the show. <laughs> Sorry, Darius, quick change the subject. What's premise six? <laughs> God created human beings. Yep. Of okay. course. Premise seven. Premise seven. Human beings are not perfect. Yep. Definitely. That's the core, that's a core Christian premise, actually. Yeah, that's what sin's all about. Okay, got it. Um, 
So the conclusion is God cannot exist because he, he is uh, defined as all perfect, mentioned in premise three, which would mean that he is a perfect creator, mentioned in premise four, which would mean that everything he creates has to be perfect. Oh, I don't know if that actually follows. I think that, um, re- like, I mean, a perfect creator should be able to make something imperfect. Uh, they could cho- choose to do that. I don't see why it's a restriction. Like, he could, the action he would make would be perfect action. If he was like, I'm going to make something that is imperfect, he would do that flawlessly. He would do but, that perfectly. Um, <laughs> yeah, he would do it. He would perfectly make something imperfect. He would do what he set out to do. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So would, but he you would, say, he... would you say imperfection is, is not perfection? No, but I, I think that the perfection, if to be a perfect creator means to create exactly what you wanted to create, doesn't necessarily mean creating something that is perfect. Right? Well, I'm saying uh, if he's a perfect creator, if everything he creates has to be perfect by like following that logic yeah I'd, i just don't know if that not necessarily yeah also like what does perfect even not mean right i think it's subjective I mean, it, right that's what i that would be like yeah it would it, i believe it is subjective but like not according to like abrahamic the, theology the bible and that's yeah. the kind of mindset that yeah that's the kind of mindset i'm trying to i tried well, i tried to get into for this argument because you know it's, it's kind of like really black and white there is no there's kind of like things that aren't subject subjective that i find to be subjective but they find it to be objective like god being perfect i don't really know what that would mean but to them i guess it means like he can't make mistakes and stuff like that and mm. i don't know I, so, I, I would think that an all perfect being can't create something that's not perfect. So I guess the Christian answer because to this all would perfect be in every way. The the yeah the uh, there is a like just from talking to some of my Christian friends the answer I know that they would give is God didn't want to just create these like mindless automatons that are bit machines built to worship him. He wanted to build things that had the choice of whether to worship and love him or not. So in order to do that, he had to give them the power to do things he didn't agree with and just guide them and tell them not to do them, but they have to be able to do them. So that's so in that sense, yeah. he is set out to create the perfect being as it perfect in the sense of being able to choose to love him or not. And the only way you could do that was if they right. could do things that you considered imperfection. So in a sense, he has created the perfect human beings. I think that's what they'd say. Right. And I understand that answer because they would just say that, well, God, I mean, well, uh, human beings, um, I think I hear a lot of people say, well, human beings like Adam and Eve were perfect, but then um, they became imperfect or not perfect through like mm. sin and free will. But I well, would think yeah. that yeah. since God created since God created everything, he created sin and free will. So they all yeah. have yeah. to agree. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the argument that I'd bring up. Like God created the devil, didn't he? So that was a, an uh-huh. act of choice that he made. Yeah, so the devil and And I also have another argument for that. Well it kinda it's kinda like the logical problem with evil, but except I use sin because like I don't know, the devil and they can say that. But yeah, that's a, that's I, that's another argument I also have. But yeah, with the whole I I, I hear um theists bring that up a lot. Um with the Abrahamic God, it's like well, no, human beings uh, fail because of sin and because of uh, free will. But I'm like, sin and free will, like, it, it, it would still follow that all of that stuff would be perfect and we would still be perfect. But you don't think that we are perfect. So where did the imperfect or where did the, yeah, where did the imperfection yeah. come in at? I, I think yeah, um, I that. That would be on question. this free will thing, on the free will thing, I often point out that like people often say free will as if you have all choices available to you or mm. no free will as and you don't have any choice yeah. at all but we actually have a limit like whether we have you know whether the universe is deterministic or not if we just ignore that and say we have choices we only have a certain amount of choices like i could you know like quit the show right now get up and punch my screen that is a choice i can make and obviously i'm not re-incentivized incentivized <laughs> to do it but i couldn't <laughs> jump up now and punch the sun out of the sky that is literally not a choice i can make but God could have designed humans to be able to do that. Like he could have said, 
humans can punch stars out of the sky. And there's no reason why... I mean, he let us do other horrible things. So really, when if, if there was all choices available to us, that's like true free will, you could say. And if there's no choices available to us, that's like no free will. But he's given us this like select subset where he has chosen which things we can do. Like, if I was a horrible person, I could kill my cat. Yeah. But I couldn't turn my cat into six other cats. So he's chosen... <laughs> <laughs> he has chosen that I should be allowed to murder, but he has chosen that I shouldn't be allowed to, you know, fly. So he's like, obviously decided yeah. that murder is more okay for me than flying for some reason. Because <laughs> flying, like, he's told me not to murder. Like, okay, guys, please don't murder. But he's been like, you cannot fucking breathe underwater, no matter what you do, mate. Don't even try it. Waste of time. Yeah. Not happening. And so to me, it sounds like yeah. breathing underwater yeah, is more forbidden by that. God than murder is. Yep. You had to find out so you couldn't breathe underwater by your, on your own. He didn't tell you. <laughs> right, that's true too. But <laughs> yes, I, I feel like but, I, uh, I had a vibe for it before. And another before thing Christ. being just the like, you know, when you talk about the free will in the sense of uh, tell, telling you to worship me, being like, I'll give you free will, so I'm not going to force you to worship me. But like, if you don't worship me, I'm going to torture you for all of eternity. But you know, it's your choice. Yeah. It's your choice to make. Choice, it's just if yeah. you choose not to, then you'll be tortured for all of eternity. So, you know. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, <laughs> but if you do if the you thing I don't want, I'm going to hit you with a hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly that. So, um, overall, what do you all think of think of my argument that I proposed my i guess my i think we both said that the um if you're perfect you have to create perfect things is maybe i don't know what did you think sin maybe that's the weak yeah point. that's kind of like the flawed premise i mean to us it's like yes 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 but you know to argue from the other side and just be like that's where that's definitely like the flawed premise because if you are perfect, you, you would said, perfectly um, make something that's imperfect. Like you could definitely if do If you want it. Yeah. 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 But I, I would, and I mean, I understand that, um, I understand that imperfect basically means not perfect, but I would also like keep using not perfect since, you know, that would be a logical contradiction because it can't be like perfect and right. not perfect at the same time. Um, yeah. but what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, like creating mm -hmm. something that's perfectly not perfect. The, yeah. The, a problem with that I've, instead of saying... Like, I don't think so. I, I just feel like... Imperfect. I feel... So, I mean, obviously not quite the, the level of God, but, like, I think there are some musicians and pretty much everything they do is just, like, perfect. Perfect. Like, the, the Canadian band Protest the Hero... They are perfect, and everything they set out to do, they they fucking smash it, and it's ten out of ten amazing. But if they wanted to, they could go up on stage yeah. and just make a mess, and they would be creating something imperfect, even though they are perfect creators. I don't. It's not. It's not really the same because they're not gods. But I, I, I don't know. I just yeah, feel I like Trent Reznor is a god. It's a little different with the god <laughs> thing. And I understand, well, that, like perfection to me is subjective because it's like you can say that anything is perfect. But with like from a theist pr perspective, especially with the Abrahamic religions, they feel like God is this perfect, all good, just can't do anything wrong being. Like with 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 certain, I mean, works of art, and I mean just anything that we perceive as perfect, it it can be perfect to us. But it's like that's just my opinion, you know what I'm saying? But like when they refer to God as perfect to them, that's not an opinion. It's like it's objective and it can't be wrong. So that's, I don't know, that's the... Well, yes, and that's why basically you. if if you're arguing with theists and using these, this list of, you know, foul premises and whatnot, I mean, they're still just going to find a reason to argue against you or they'll just be like, no, well, faith. Well, I mean, right? Isn't that the answer at the end always? Faith? You know? <laughs> oh, no, I definitely understand it. I de and I mean, I don't really see... Um how they could like wiggle the faith part into it i mean they could they could just say faith and then they could be enough for them but um like usually with this kind of arguments with the uh with like oh people are perfect or people are bad and stuff like that they usually say 
free will, you know, free will this, free will that, sin, the fall of man and all that stuff. But like mm-hmm. I said, I would just bring up that God created all of that. So it has to be perfect following your logic. But um, but no, I definitely understand that theists will, they are, I wouldn't say they're good at wiggling their way out of arguments, but they, they flail <laughs> and they, they do it a lot. But. And and then it's okay. I mean, that's all I had for for you all. If uh, y'all didn't have anything else for me. No, but thank you so so much for calling. Uh, that was a great talk. And um, yeah, thanks for calling and call yeah. back some other time as well. And I think uh, what well, I, th- I want to present my <laughs> argument another time also. Um, and thank okay, you. that thank sounds you. great. Awesome. Right, have a good one. You too. You too. So I I think we were going to try to squeeze in one more caller. Uh, And I I think we can't hear Katie right now. (laughs) We're having some technical difficulties. Um, Yes. So hello, everyone. It's just me now. (laughs) And I... Yes. Okay. So we're going to, we are going to take one more call and let's see who we've got. Okay. So we are going to be talking to Dan from Canada. Let's just see. Hey, thanks for having me on. You there, Dan. Awesome. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. It's been a nice relaxing day for me. You guys have some good conversations so far. Yes, absolutely. So uh, thank you so much for calling and uh, keeping this party going. So what you got for us today? I I had a question and a hypothetical for you. Um, okay, great. And my question is pretty simple. Of all the hosting shows and things like that, has anybody presented a good argument for a deity? A plausible argument? Um, I, I think that the answer to that is no, uh, there is a reason why these shows continue on and have plenty of people calling in and <laughs> we just keep making them cause we have not found that, uh, that proof yet or something that makes sense or convinces us. I'll put it that way. Nobody has said anything yet that convinces us that, that, that there's a deity. Yeah, that's kind of what I suspected the answer was going to be, but, well, okay. <laughs> so Sorry, I, missed, uh, I missed the start of that due to a tech issue. Are you asking, has anyone made a convincing argument for God? Um, Essentially. Like a plausible argument for a deity, or at least an entertaining one. Yeah, I, I guess... <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of entertaining ones, (laughs) whether or not they're plausible. That's that's what this show is, isn't it? Entertaining arguments Mm. for God. Um, (laughs) I think that um, there are some plausible arguments for God in that if someone's like, oh, there is a creator of the universe, something has created the universe and it doesn't care about people and it just has done a thing. And it's not necessarily all powerful or whatever. It's just create the universe. And I call that God. I'd be like, well, I guess. Like, <laughs> okay. I, guess I, I mean, it could be. Uh, and, and it's kind of meaningless to me, whether we call that God or just a natural process or, you know, magic space wizard or whatever. Like, But it's kind of plausible. So that's not a very exciting answer. But I guess that's kind of the point. It's like when you... Because obviously, God defining God is just like a big argument we often have at the start of any conversation with a, a theist who's trying to do a more general argument. It's like, well, if you define God specifically enough, like it's the God of the Bible, then I can be like, what a, an argument I was going to bring up with the last caller is we can say, well, do you think your God is all moral? And then they're like, yeah. And you're like, well, do you think slavery is good? And they say, no. And then you're like, well, your God thinks it's okay. So you're more moral than your own God. So therefore your God is bullshit. It, any God that promotes slavery, we, we know isn't real. Like it's just ridiculous. It, unless of course it's described as an evil, hateful God, in which case, fair enough. But an, an all loving God that also just has a laugh when children die of cancer. Like it doesn't, there's no, that doesn't exist. It's a logical contradiction as far as I'm concerned, really. Um, 
But then it, that's when they do a specific one. But then if they do a more general one, you there's this kind of line when you step past it. When you get into this point where you're like, well, God is any one thing that created the universe. It's like, okay. I mean, it's a bit like, you know, when we say God created lightning and then you're like, oh, actually, I'm going to define the th God as any one thing that creates lightning. And then you're like, oh, okay. So it's just like electricity in the clouds, in which case I, I do agree that your God exists, but it's just like, electrons <laughs> i don't know it's just something that's just happening maybe the universe was happened in a natural process and that natural process we're calling god and suddenly it's not interesting so i think there's kind of the problem with whenever you make an argument for god if you make a specific one then it's probably going to have a problem and if you don't make a specific one then it's like so uninteresting that i'm not really going to argue with it because it's like yeah i guess so like yeah maybe could be sure <laughs> but if if we're doing funny stories, uh, there is actually an episode of the Atheist Experience that I was on uh, a couple of years ago, and um, we had someone call in, and their argument was, the entire universe is made of crystals, therefore God. And we ended up going down a rabbit hole of like, <laughs> what the hell do you mean by the whole universe is made of crystals? And uh, like, what is a crystal to you? And how is that possible? Because a crystal is a structure, and so it can't be the smallest part. So what makes up the structure? Uh, but, and then, then the call ended and it was over. And I really want to know how you, I wish we had just said, okay, yeah, everything's made of crystals. So, so where does, how, how God from there? But yeah. I just, I guess I'll never know. So if that person is out there, like, please. Call back and I, explain I, it. I am begging you. <laughs> but Dan, uh, you also oh, mentioned God. that you had a, qu a question as well. So I was curious about that. Uh I did, seeing as how we've had so many great hypotheticals today. Um, <laughs> so, presuming that a deity is possible and exists. Now, if they're outside of our universe and can somehow jam in the makings of our universe to expand into what we found before us, they could be a deity because they created the everything. But does that make them moral? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, we've raised several arguments as to why it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, something I've thought about before is, like, just imagine that tomorrow God shows up and like it's literally just in front of you like in, in an undeniable way where you just like i am now convinced that god is real and god is like i want you personally to kill all left-handed people you'd be like that is immoral as fuck i'm not doing that and the god's like well you just go to hell forever then like hell is real i'll show you what it's like it's really bleak like if you were in a situation where you knew for sure that god was real and you also knew that god was evil would you do the immoral thing that God was demanding or would you go to like, I understand that it's got the kind of noble, like, uh, you know, the hypothetical, oh, I would take a stand and I would do the right thing. You would go to hell forever. Like that is literally <laughs> unimaginably bad. Like, I don't know where my line is. I mean, I'm not saying I'm coming for left-handed people or anything, but it, I, you know, if you met God and it was, and it showed you hell and was like, you, this is a bad time. I don't know what maybe you would do something immoral. So maybe an evil god is the most terrifying thing of all. I don't know. Could it could get you to do silly things? Though it couldn't get me to eat mayonnaise. So maybe I <laughs> don't have a line. <laughs> <laughs> Way to bring it full circle. <laughs> yeah. What do you? Yeah, think I mean, I I, I think that just. Just by just by saying or just by proving that there is a god, that doesn't that in no way necessitates that it's somehow moral. And looking at like the some of the old world gods of, um, I don't know if that's the right term actually, but looking at some of the gods of other uh, societies like the Roman gods or the Greek gods or something, they're all wacky as shit. Like they do all kinds mm -hmm. of nonsense, cutting each other's heads off and having sex with their own half children and. All all kinds of bullshit and as kind of the fun of them it's like not just now looking yeah. back but at the time knowing that these gods did because if you're you know an ancient civilization and you're relying on this like field of wheat to grow to survive and then the field of wheat dies 
you could be sort of a uh, God is all perfect and always does the right thing. And this must be my fault. Or you might just be like, man, God's a dickhead. And they're, they're yeah. kind of a nice uh, way. And you'd be like, oh, this is the God of mischief. And he's come and sorted the land. Like what a total knobhead. We need the God <laughs> of thunder to zap him with a lightning bolt. And it's, it's more yes. reassuring in a way, isn't it? Because there's, there's a God of car crashes and a God of, losing your sock in the washing machine and stuff and <laughs> and that's it's you just like curse you <laughs> um I, I don't know so yeah maybe some gods are immoral who knows <laughs> what do you think to that dan well that's kind of where this question has been kicking around my head for the last week or so and uh I just I, I'm calling in with a slightly different perspective from some of the other callers where I am not in any way smart enough to offer proof of the existence of a divine deity. But I kinda hope there is one. Mm. And so mm. you know, it would be nice if they were moral and existed. And I'm just kinda, it would be nice. It would be nice. It'd be it would nice be... if there was an afterlife for... where uh, yeah. I got to all the people who died. But I don't think it would be nice if there was... I, I'm, I'm not up for the Christian God being real. Because... Yeah, that guy's a fucking so dick. evil. It's so evil. And his followers um, are assholes. <laughs> <Some of them. laughs> like, no, I don't want to say all of them. Some of my best friends are Christian. Generalizing. <laughs> of course, I know beautiful people who uh, believe in that guy, but... You know, yeah. on the the global scale, like the bigger picture everything. on on the news, they look like jerks. <laughs> yeah, at least, at least one of them is a dickhead. Um, <laughs> that's for sure. But, yeah, um, but I, I think that's the whole thing about God right. in general. Anyway, is just that, or or any of this stuff. Again, it, it is. It's meant to be reassuring. It's meant to be comforting. You know, like coming to that rationality in that age of reason, it's it is so hard because you are having to let go of that paradigm that's shaped your life. That's like all of this has a reason and all of this has a purpose. And it, when you kind of realize like that's not necessarily true at all, it can be really jarring and it would be nice it would be nice if to know that someone out there's got our back some being uh, has, you know is taking care of us but i think that we also just need to try to be comfortable with the idea that like that's not necessarily true and you know maybe it's more helpful to not pretend like it is I also it's hard. I agree with that. It it would be nice, but I also think that's kind of a, a I don't know. It's a bit of a privileged position because as privileged position because as someone who is like fairly privileged life as far as humans go, um, you know, in the whole of history, I've had a pretty easy life, and it might be nice to think, oh, it's because God's looking out for me, and like, you know, me and God have a nice relationship, and He's loving and caring. <laughs> But like most humans have not had an easy as easy life as me to, you know, be like a um, someone born in the 20th century um, compared to like all the other times. Like so, so many people have had such horrific lives. And then for me to be like, oh, God is there and he's looking out for you. Like sometimes you say that there are people alive today who have torturous lives. And to say to them, oh, God loves you and he's looking out for you and you've just got to have faith and it's just kind of saying to them like well fuck you because my god's nice to me and i'm not going to hear any disagreement because if you say well i've got horrible life then i presume that's got to be your fault because my god is always right and uh and then it, i just think it has a bad mentality like, it's a bad it's like i don't think it's necessarily awful way to look at the world but like i think it sets you up to go down these lines of like especially when it's kind of like a global political scale you're like mm -hmm, oh there yeah. are all these people in other countries who have a shit life pretty much so i can have a good life yeah and i want to make the world a better place but lots of people are like no nah, i know god loves everyone equally and i'm sure he's looking out for them and you know it's just the way the yeah. world's meant to be and then uh yeah it's a mystery God, God works in mysterious ways. Works in mysterious ways. <laughs> he he, uh, he thinks that you should just earn the same amount every second as someone else works for an entire year. 
yeah it's just how god right. works you know so <laughs> yeah. well but anyway thanks for your call um it was uh, a good discussion i've lost the page hang on a sec <laughs> <laughs> um yeah thanks thanks for calling in dan and i appreciate uh, you guys taking my call and uh see you guys around i hope yeah, yeah. hopefully talk again thanks a lot dan um so yeah sorry for the slight tech issues there everyone i am back um so just a, a few things to finish up with i think this has been a really good show um, yeah i agree perhaps, perhaps you're uh you're feeling like the whole thing's pretty cool maybe you're in yep, the austin area it. on uh may the 28th 2023 and then will will be broadcasting live from the three free thought library um talk heaven will be hosted by forest valkai and sophia spina Sophia auditioned for the open call and did a fantastic job, so we're excited for her appearance. Um, the Atheist Experience will be ho hosted by Forrest and Jim Barrows. Uh, the doors open at noon, and we'll hope to see you there. So that's really cool. I would, I'd love to go to one of those one day. It would be, it'd be really fun. Um, but me also, too. maybe if maybe you're not in the area, and maybe you're like me and live. Well, actually, you you live like far away from it as well so <laughs> a little bit but i do yeah. go down there uh, a couple times a year so i'm okay. hoping to plan the next time i do go down there i can make it to one of the live shows oh that'd be wicked yeah you should yeah. do that um but may at least you're kind of in a similar time zone but maybe you're like around the world like me and you would like to help out with the aca um well you can um uh, oh, I'm actually reading the wrong bit. Basically, you can be a volunteer. <laughs> um, come, come, message our do our email and let us know. Maybe you want to help. That wasn't a bit I was going to say. What I was going to say was <laughs> <laughs> if that you really love the um, the ACA and you want to watch all of our cool stuff. Um, well, there's actually a new channel where you can watch Atheist Experience 24/7. Um, you don't even have to sleep. You can tune at any time of day. And um, yeah, just watch all the clips, all the shows. There's 26 seasons of the Atheist Experience, which is pretty cool. Wow, um, pretty mad. And if you watch, you can see that one episode I'm on, and you can all be like, "Yay!" Um, yeah, for that, <laughs> you go to tinycc tv. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, also uh, we've just had a very generous super chat from uh, Bjorn Kamitz, which was. Um, a very uh gracious amount of swedish corona who says yes. um hey guys i don't suffer any religious hang overhang but i can see how religion is being used to keep people ignorant and obedient <clears throat> then having them doing anything to defend whatever they have been th uh thought i guess taught, taught keep up yeah. the fight of rationality thanks that's uh i totally agree it's it is used to control people um yeah in really weird ways. Sometimes you see these, uh, just generally around the world, you see these very obviously not religious or religious themed presidents and leaders and politicians and and somehow they get the religious crew because sometimes that's just how it happens and it's a control thing. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good super chat. Uh, did you have a comment on that, Sin? And, oh. No, just, yeah, I agree. Like, I think it's religion in general is very often used as a tool of oppression <laughs> maybe even always um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in literally um, every possible sense if you agree with that statement uh please like the video and subscribe to the channel uh that should have been what won you over if nothing else has um, also, maybe you can become a member. You can click the join button just below the video. You can go to our Patreon, tiny.cc forward slash Patreon TH and uh, sign up and help us out there. Um, you can go listen to all of the podcasts at tiny.cc forward slash AEN podcast. Um, you can become part of the community at the Facebook page, tiny.cc forward slash FBTHG. Um, maybe you want to continue the discussion. Uh, join us at the Atheist... Um, uh, the ACD, our fan run Discord server at tiny.cc forward slash ACD Discord. Um, and also come check out the newest uh, non profits episode, which will be 3 p.m. Central at tiny.cc forward slash YTMP. Um, yeah, so thanks, Sim, for being on the show. It's been really fun. 
Thank Thanks you so much for, for having me. Love it. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much to all of the amazing crew uh, who make this show function at all. Let's get the crew cams up. Love to all of the crew here. Um, we could send out some love rings to the crew and from the crew to everyone. <laughs> Let's get the love ring sender out. Here's the rings. Um, <laughs> Is that our version yes. of praying for you? Yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're suffering for absolutely no reason, but we're sending some love rings your way. So I'm love not going to try to make the world better for you. <laughs> I could. I could. It's in my power. But I've sent love rings, so I don't know what else you expect me to do. Goodness sake. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks to all the viewers. You know, I hope that you enjoyed it. Please uh, write us a comment and tell, say why we're the best two hosts ever, because then we'll get invited back more. Um, and you know, super thanks to everyone who's working hard to fight for the the battle against merging religion and state into one horrible entity which controls people's lives. <sighs> um, but yeah, if uh, if you if you do believe, we don't hate you. We're just not convinced. We want the truth, so watch Truth Wanted live Friday at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTTW and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call TW.